Hey guys, um, wanted to post a follow-up video to the last one on unmet expectations in marriage. This is Priscilla, uh, I'm John Mark, and um, hopefully uh, this will come as an encouragement to you. This is a really difficult time uh, in many people's lives, and um, we're still in the, the lockdown as we're recording this video. Um, it's just, uh, it's been six weeks now, I guess, for most of us that we've kind of been locked in. I don't think I've ever sat at the house this much my whole life uh, since maybe I was a child. Uh, this is difficult for many of us and um, working at our patience and, um, and that brings up all kinds of issues, but we want to talk for a few minutes about marriage and, um, and want to use Paul Tripp as kind of our guide, this is the book we're going through. We're, we're going to be talking a little bit about things that he's saying in this book, um, but also just kind of some other things that, that we found helpful as we've ministered uh, to couples and then in our own marriage. Um, maybe I should say one other thing about this book. I, we would highly recommend this. We said this in the first video that we've been greatly helped by this book, and we've helped, uh, tried to help many other couples. Uh, and, and have heard that this was this was good for them as, as well. Um, this is biblical counseling at its best. Uh, Paul Tripp is an incredibly competent and clear uh, Bible teacher on top of uh, just hours of, of counseling experience with couples uh, in in their marriage struggles. That's a powerful combination. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a book aimed at the heart. Um, not with sentimental, you know, little fluffy stories for your emotions, um, but but really powerfully exposing the human soul, um, revealing areas of our lives, behavior patterns, thought processes, wrong belief systems uh, that really erode at a marriage over time, and he has he masterfully is able to pull that out and reveal that and help uh, progress to be made in marriage. So highly recommend the book. Uh, we're not going to follow through chapter by chapter, but hit some of the main themes and some things that we found really helpful uh, along the way. Um, I think Priscilla wanted to to kind of begin by by talking about uh, the theme for for this video on uh, being unprepared for marriage. So I'll, I'll let her take over. I guess I can speak even from our own experience. Um, you know, I think. It's fair to say that majority of couples don't really prepare for marriage. Um, it's not even something we think about, uh, you know, like most, for most jobs, for most things in our lives. You know, we, also, we read books about it. We, we try to, to get information about it. But a lot of times when it comes to relationships, I feel like most people just want to go with the flow. And um, I think the basis for... Um, you know what is holding everything together is the feelings they have for one another um, how compatible they are mm -hmm. um, how the other person make them feel sometimes even goals like could be something that unite people I, I know some people want to surf together in a mission, mission field or be doctors together and, um, and all those things are you know what they put the foundation of their relationship in and so it's 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 really a shocker for them when they get married and they realize that things um, don't stay the same. Um, and so it's it's really unfortunate for most people. In the first chapter of the book, I think he gives a really helpful illustration about how many how people treat relationships sometimes. Uh, like when we, you know, we have a desire to eat that, um, you know, in a healthy meal. You, he gave an example of the fried fish and chips um, and then a chocolate mousse afterwards. You know, all those things, they look really appealing and you love to eat them. Um, but you're not really thinking, mm, is this, you know, going to make me feel good afterwards? Or how many calories are in this meal? Or um, just the sugar content of that dessert? Like, you're not, you don't really want to think about those things. Um, and so when the, you know, indigestion comes and all those things come afterwards, then you start thinking about the issues. And so he's saying, you know, he used that illustration. I thought it was helpful because if we're willing to ask the hard questions before we get into the marriage or even in the beginning, um, it'll be easier to prepare when the problems do come. Um, so I would say, if, if anything, we can start by saying preparation is a good thing 
um, to go to any marriage. Um, and even if you are married now, you can still prepare. You can yeah. still be in the preparation mode and still continue to work at it. Um, I guess. Yeah, and I was going to read a quote. Uh, he Paul Tripp says, you'll need something more sturdy than romance. Uh, you need something deeper than shared interests and mutual attraction. And, uh, and again, like Very what you true. were saying, uh, a lot of marriages are built on these uh, shared hobbies, same kind of similar interests. And the problem is that those interests often change. Hobbies change, uh, preferences change, jobs and careers change. Circumstances can change things. Circumstances yeah. change. I mean, you think you're going to, you know, you love to run together and you love to do this and that. And then someone has some sort of terminal illness and it everything changes. It's just, it's sinking sand. It's not a solid foundation to build a marriage on. And, and Paul Tripp is right about... Uh, being underprepared for marriage because you're building a marriage on a wrong a wrong foundation and um you know maybe it would be helpful to kind of talk for a moment about why people are unprepared so obviously many times people are unprepared because they're thinking about the wedding oh my gosh we got to get a wedding we got to invite all these people put all the money all the, the the mental thought is put into a wedding put into how does this person make me feel do they love me well do we do we have that connection everything's put into those type of uh those emphasis and and not the things that matter most but but really it needs to go back further than even than even that uh, in terms of where preparation didn't happen uh, the blame really goes to the parents I mean if we want to if we want to trace this back further than even before that couple met uh, if there was failure in preparation for marriage it, it was the parents that didn't train and prepare uh, that that young man and that young woman to be married didn't teach them about the gender roles, didn't teach them uh, what a biblical marriage was to be, didn't teach them biblical manhood and womanhood type responsibilities and, and, and just the work of that. And, and they just weren't prepared beforehand. And so uh, everything is trying to play catch up and you really, you can't in many cases. Um, the, the failures already happened. And, you know, very few in our day, I would say the it is very rare to find someone whose parents diligently prepared them for marriage. Um, unfortunately, even in Christian context, that's pretty rare. So I think at that point, the local church has to really step up and assume uh, some responsibility uh, for preparing couples for marriage. And even couples that are already married, but then find themselves unprepared, uh, the local church has to then step in. Um, I mean, you can't go if you're 30 and 40 years old and you're married and you've been married for 10 years, you can't exactly go and, uh, or you shouldn't blame your parents at that point. I mean, your parents are kind of out of the picture. You know, you've left mother and father, you hold fast to your spouse now, and, and your local church is going to be uh, the ones to greatly help you in your marriage uh, once you're already in this. So, uh, in the, I mean, in terms of local church, I think some people probably hear local church and they think, well, I go to church on Sundays, um, you know, go to a church service. Like, what do we mean when we say involvement in a local church is necessary? Um, I would say, you know, we're talking about um, a more, a deeper connection, uh, deeper relationships. Um, we're talking about accountability. We're talking about being in each other's lives enough that we can display and see the gospel displayed in marriage and in relationships so that we can emulate you know paul says imitate me as i imitate christ and that principle can follow um as couples you know love one another in the local church um you and can watch each other watch each yeah. other um you could have you know um mentors of women and men that can you know pass on helpful wisdom from scripture and their lives um, mm -hmm. you have elders and pastors that can help you and um and obviously you know it's important to put a qualifier that even though parents have a just an extreme role in that in, in the local church like there are cases where most the blame lies on the individual for not really listening mm -hmm. you could be that person that chooses the hard path you know yeah 
Um, and, you know, parents may have tried everything and, and the local church may have advice and you've chose the hard path or you're so blinded by emotion that you couldn't really, you know, receive advice. And there's still hope for you. Um, it's just that, you know, you, you got to understand and you got to take responsibility for those those things. Yeah, and, and maybe one amen to all that. Uh, maybe one other comment regarding the local church that just came to my mind is I think, you know, a church, like what is the church's role in training other than demonstrating healthy marriages and, and that people should be able to look at marriages in the church and see what to do, not just hear what to do. But it is important to hear what to do. Um, but I think most people when they think, well, is my local church preparing me to be uh, to have a good marriage? And, and the first thing that's going to come to their mind is, well, how many marriage sermons has the pastor preached? Yeah. You know, uh, when was the last time he preached on Ephesians 5? When was the last time he preached on Genesis 2? Uh, when was the last time he, he taught on First uh, Peter 3? And there, many people's view of, of marriage help is just dealing with specific marriage passages. Yeah. That is not, I mean, there's a reason why there's only a few marriage passages in the Bible. Uh, because the God intends for the whole counsel of Scripture to actually help us in our marriage. Um, you know, there, there are so many topics in Scripture that, have, that teach us about, I mean, if you just learn about self-denial and love for your neighbor, that's marriage help. Exactly. Uh, learning to deny self, learning to serve others. Uh, that is direct marriage counsel right there uh, without the word marriage even being brought up. So there's just so much scripture mm -hmm. for a church to just faithfully teach through the whole counsel of God is helping marriages. Right. Um, he that, even that mentions that it be, in, the, in the book that yeah, we Paul should Church not treat that. the Bible as an encyclopedia, but as a holistic book. Yeah. Um, so he, he makes that qualification a lot in, in the in the first chapter. Yeah, so so a church shouldn't think, oh, our church is doing good marriage preparation for all the couples because my pastor preaches on marriage all the time. Um, preaching the whole counsel of God, continually putting the gospel before people, the grace of God, um, how to deal with their sin. I preached about that this morning. Uh, this is this is how marriages are strengthened. Uh, just continually hearing all of the central themes of Scripture, renewing our minds in those, implementing and living those out. Um, uh, something else he points out that I think is worth saying um, is the already not yet. Uh, just really having a realistic view of marriage, that marriage is not in heaven, you know, and it's not in hell. Uh, you're not enemies, uh, but you're not perfect, uh, perfect, two perfect glorified people. You are still sinners uh, in between. Uh, you're on earth and you're not in heaven and you're a sinner and mm -hmm. yet you're a saint. And, um, and you have the Holy Spirit and you also struggle living in a body of sin and death and living in a culture that's warring against all the things that we're to be living for as couples. So uh, he, he talks about the already not yet uh, of the context yeah. of marriage, which is helpful because... Yeah. I mean, it's it's the reality. We're stuck in, in the middle. You know, we're after redemption, but not full redemption. Yeah. And so we're still here in this broken world trying to have a, a, a biblical yeah. marriage in the world with two sinners in the broken world. So you're going to face a lot of trials. Yeah, which gets into what we talked about in the first video in, in his first chapter with unmet expectations. You know, if you come into marriage thinking... Um, this person honored me and and spoke to me a certain way and and we things were a certain way in the dating phase or in the courtship phase uh and then you get married and it's not that way and then people just lose it you know they they think of divorce they think of all these ways to get out of the marriage um that's a failure to understand the already not yet that's a failure to understand you you have actually married a sinner and, and look, even best case scenario, let's say best case scenario, uh, your parents prepared you. You were saved in an early age and, and grew a lot in the Lord and prepared many ways personally. Uh, and let's say you, you're in the context of a healthy church with many great examples and people to help you. You are still going to be, you're still married to a sinner. 
uh, you're, you will still not have the ideal marriage in all the ways that you thought it should be. Um, and even people who say, well, our marriage is great. I don't even know what y'all are talking about, about all these problems. We never fight. Da, da, da. Well, they're probably dealing with a lot of pride. Uh, those people think they're, yeah. they, they don't have issues and they don't need the grace of God. So, uh, I mean, every marriage has its imperfections. None of them are what they should be. Um, and all of us are striving to, to image for something of the glory of God, something of Christ in the right. church. And, um, but it's going to be a fallen, broken picture of that. And, you know, lastly, um, I think uh, in this book, one of the things that's really important uh, that he gets into, and it's really the whole rest of the book, to be honest. Um, yeah, his main theme. Yeah, is, is a lifestyle of reconciliation. Um, that's to learn how to continually be reconciled on a daily basis on a moment by moment basis, uh, how to keep with repentance, how to continue to confess, how to continue to love and serve and give grace to each other uh, when you fail each other is massive. Um, because little it's the little things that ruin marriages. It's not just big sins. It's not just uh, committing adultery. It's not just some a horrible thing that you just think will never happen. To, it's all the little things. Yeah, it's those little, little things that usually make up the marriage. It's the little it's, bricks. It's all the little things. And 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 that's the value of this book. Uh, the rest of this book going forward is that he's going to begin to unpack what it looks like to live a lifestyle of reconciliation. And he gets into themes of like planting, harvesting, investing, giving grace, which Again, those kind of catch words don't necessarily mean anything, but he unpacks them in ways that I think are extremely helpful uh, to really begin to cultivate um, something that isn't aimed at happiness, but holiness. You know, it isn't just aimed to get your, to, to, to just feel good about, oh, well, my spouse is now loving me in all the ways I wanted to be loved. Yeah, that's actually a very small goal for marriage. If your goal is, is happiness, it's a very small goal that God did not intend that to be the goal of your marriage. And, and God may not be honored at all in your happiness. You may be happy about things you shouldn't be happy about. Um, the, happiness is not the goal. Holiness is the goal. Uh, God getting glory is the goal. And the beauty is when God is getting glory, uh, we oftentimes get the deepest joy in our marriage and, and we experience the most love in our marriage. Um, so anyway, those are things that we're going to get into more. We don't want to make these videos too long. We're going to keep kind of chopping them up a little bit, um, but those are coming. Uh, sorry about the long pause in between these, these last two. Um, I hope you'll read this book. Obviously, reading all the stuff that he has would be far more valuable than these little short videos we're making, but hopefully these uh, begin to open up the themes and get you curious enough to read and to pray and to think, and most of all, to talk as uh, as spouses about these matters and to pray to the Lord uh, to make progress. We love you guys. Uh, Lord willing, we miss uh, we'll you guys. make another video in a couple weeks uh, or in a couple days. Uh, <laughs> blessings, guys. Lord willing. Bye.